Hello, and welcome to A Gross of Physics. Today is day 48, and what I'd like to do today is a few sample problems dealing with friction. We've been talking about friction in terms of its equation, um, UFN, and we've been able to d distinguish between different types of friction, kinetic and static, and we realized the fact that static was for stationary motion, kinetic was for moving objects, and we were able to calculate whether or not an object would move in the first place. Static friction can change the value based on the force applied until you reach the static limit. If you exceed the static limit, all of a sudden the object will start to move and it will become kinetic friction. Well, conceptually these are interesting topics, but I think it's important to put, uh, put it into practice. So what I'd like to do today is a few practice problems dealing with friction. We'll take out the whiteboard and we'll solve some problems now. All right, it's time to do some practice problems dealing with friction and forces. So what we have for the first one is a car, and we're going to determine the amount of friction between the tires and the car itself. So the free body diagram is just going to involve the mass of the car inside the box and the forces acting on it. Now all we're concerned with is the amount of friction. So the forces that we'll deal with are gravity and the normal force. Now it doesn't state which type of friction we have, but we do know that we're moving along wet asphalt. So if we look on our chart, we'll see that rubber on asphalt, we have dry versus wet, and when you're on wet asphalt, what you're going to do is have 0.53. And the only one that's listed is kinetic. So we can't find the static friction, so all we can find is the amount of kinetic friction. Now in order to do this, we have to remember our equation for friction, which is mu Fn. We already have the mu, and we need to find the normal force. Well, the normal force in this case, since we're on flat ground, is going to be equal and opposite to gravity. So we're going to take Fg as Mg, and we're going to calculate 1250 times 9.8 meters per second squared. And if we use our calculator to do that, I don't know this off the top of my head, 1250 times 9.8, and we get 12,250, so 12,250 newtons. Since in the y direction there's no motion, sum of the forces in the y equals zero. Fn is up minus Fg is down equals zero. Fn is going to be the same as Fg, which is 12 to 50. Now we know the normal force and we know the coefficient of kinetic friction. So friction equals mu Fn equals 0 0.53. Remember, no units for the coefficient. 1, 2, 2, 5, 0 newtons is the normal force. And if we do 0 0.53 times second answer, I have 6,492.5 newtons. So almost 6,500 newtons of friction. Now that's when it's moving. We don't know anything about its forward motion right now. So this is as far as we can calculate with what we're given. 6,492.5 newtons. Our next problem involves a bicyclist traveling forward on flat concrete sidewalk. So it's concrete versus rubber. And I'm assuming that's going to be in our reference table. And if I look, we have rubber on concrete, dry or wet. And the problem mentions nothing about it being wet or raining, so we're going to say dry. So that's going to be the coefficients we're going to need. Now since the bicyclist is moving, 
we're going to be dealing with the kinetic friction. So I'm just going to write kinetic and 0 0.68 is the value on the reference table. Now our first step should always be to draw a free body diagram. And our free body diagram is going to start with a box. And we're going to draw all the forces acting on it. Now, first of all, the bicyclist is listed as having 25 kilograms. I'm assuming that's the entire mass of the bicyclist and the bike. So this is probably a kid. And they are traveling with a forward force of 200 newtons. So the force that they apply, I'm going to call it FA, equals 200 newtons. This is a problem dealing with friction. So friction is going to oppose it. It's going to go backwards. We have the normal force of the ground pushing up, and we have gravity pulling down. So our four forces are the normal force, gravity, force applied, and friction. And in many assessments, you'll see that this is part of your, your grade. You'll, you'll get points for um, drawing the free body diagram itself. So make sure that you have all of your forces labeled and pointing in the proper direction. Now we easily have two directions here. We have the y and the x. They are perpendicular. We don't have any angles involved, so we don't have to break any legs at this point. But our first step should probably be to find the force due to gravity. And we know the equation as mg. Mass is 25 kilograms. And the acceleration is the acceleration of gravity, 9.8 meters per second squared. So using our calculator, 25 times 9.8 yields 245 newtons. That's your downward force. Since there's no other forces in the y direction, the sum of the forces in the y is going to equal Fn minus Fg equals Ma. And hopefully the bike isn't floating in the air or sinking into the ground, so this term is 0. And the normal force and gravity are equal. So that means 245 is also our value for the normal force. Now if we know the normal force, we could figure out friction. So friction is mu Fn. Friction becomes 0 0.68 times 245 newtons. So 0 0.68 times 245 is 166.6 newtons. I'm going to put that here. 166.6 newtons. All right, we've done the y direction already. Now let's look in the x direction. Some of the forces in the x, we have Fa going to the right, that's positive, minus friction going to the left equals Ma. 200 minus 166.6 equals, the mass is 25, I look right into the box, times A. Look, we have one unknown. So 200 minus 166.6 is 33.4 newtons equals 25 kilograms times A. And then A is 33.4 divided by 25. And I'm getting 1.336 meters per second squared. Now remember, free body diagrams, Newton's second law, all of this is useful to find the acceleration of the object. We can then take this information and possibly solve for final velocity or displacement or time it takes for a regular kinematics equation. So this here is going to allow us to solve for other variables if um, the problem asks for it. But for our purposes right now, it asks for what is the acceleration. And the acceleration is 1.336 meters per second squared. This next problem involves an inclined plane, a tire, and some friction. So what we have is a, a tire that's flat on the side, sliding down an icy incline. Now that means that we're going to have rubber and ice as our surface combination. So this is, an, this is ice, probably a hill, and the tire just starts sliding down the hill. Now if I look on the reference table, the rubber on ice is listed as a kinetic value 
of 0.15. We don't have any static friction in this case. Um, so it's going to be moving, and it is moving in this, in this problem. Now that being said, what we're going to do is start with a free body diagram involving the tire and the incline itself. And I'm going to draw the gravitational triangle here, which is going to have the same angle as the original incline. It's 20 degrees. And the mass of the tire is 15 kilograms. We have gravity down. We have the parallel force pulling it down the incline. And we have the perpendicular force uh, pushing opposite or perpendicular to the incline itself. That's why we call it perpendicular. We're going to have the normal force going up to the right. And then friction is going to oppose it. Now don't forget that this F parallel is really acting, and I'm just going to do dotted lines so I don't look like I have another force here, is going to be acting along the incline. So what we're going to do is have a situation where we have parallel and perpendicular. Instead of an XY coordinate system, we're going to shift the coordinate system so that it's parallel and perpendicular to the incline. So the, the coordinate system is governed by the incline itself. Now. It's just a matter of finding what the variables are that we know and then ultimately finding the acceleration of the tire. Now first and foremost, we should always start with gravity. Fg is mg. So you take 15 kilograms and multiply it by 9.8 meters per second squared. Now that being said, I'm using my calculator for this, 15 times 9.8 yields 147 newtons. So we have 147 newtons, and that is going to be acting straight down. What we have to do in this case, since we have an inclined plane, is blog. We have to break the legs of gravity. So what we're going to do now is get rid of this downward force because everything we're doing is going to be parallel or perpendicular to the incline. So this is our chance to get back at some gravity. We're going to do 147 times the sine of 20, and that'll be the parallel, and the perpendicular is going to be 147 cos 20. Now remember, our right angle is here, the angle is there, the one touching the angle is the perpendicular, so that means that's going to be our cosine term, and the one opposite is the parallel, which is why it's going to be our sine term. So 147 times the sine of 20 is 50.3, and then 147 times the cosine of 20 is 138.13. So 50.3 is here, and 138.13 is there. Now since the parallel is going to actually pull me down the incline, this 50 is going to be contributing to my parallel direction. And then the perpendicular is going to be equal and opposite to the normal force. Since there's no other forces perpendicular, the normal force becomes 138.13 newtons. Now, why is the normal force important? Well, of course, if we're going to try and, to find friction, it's mu Fn. So we're going to take 0 0.15 and multiply it by 138.13 newtons. 0.15 times, and it's still in my calculator, second answer, I get 20.72 newtons. So now we can determine the acceleration of the tire. We have all the forces values. We have 20.72 here. We have 50.3 over here. We had 138.13, and then gravity we knew to be 147. So if I sum the forces in the parallel direction, my equation looks like this. F parallel is down the incline. I use the direction of motion as my positive, minus friction, which is opposing it, so that way friction is always negative, equals ma. 50.3 minus 20.72 newtons equals 15 kilograms times a. And A is my only unknown. 50.3 minus 20.72 is 29.58 divided by 15. And I get 
acceleration to be 1.972 meters per second squared. If we knew the length of the incline, we could figure out the final velocity or how long it was moving. We could figure out the displacement. And we can use this acceleration to solve for any kinematics problem that we're looking at. We're going to do a few problems like that in a few days. But right now, we're trying to stick to one concept at a time. Now let's try a problem where we have static friction as well. What we're going to look at here is a cross-country skier who's going to apply a force that's 20% greater than the static friction to start the race. And then we're going to determine their acceleration at that point. Now all we know about the skier is that they have a mass of 55 kilograms. So when I draw my free body diagram, I'm going to want to put 55 kilograms in the box. I'm going to find the gravitational force and the normal force. And that's all I know at the beginning because I want to determine the maximum static friction. So I'm going to try to find mu fn but static. So if I look at my reference table, wax ski on snow, the static coefficient is 0 0.14. Remember, no units because it's a coefficient. Now, in order to find the normal force, I'm going to have to take the mass of the person, which was 55 kilograms, times 9.8, and that's going to get me their force of gravity, which is 539, and that'll be the same as the normal force, 539 newtons. So if I take that, 539 gets me 0.14 times answer, second answer. I'm getting 75.5. Now, how do we get 20% greater than that? Well, 20% of 75.5 would just be 75.5 times 0.2. So I want to add 15.1 newtons to that. So that would be a 6, a 0, carry the 1, 789, 90.6 newtons. So if I needed 75.5, anything less is not going to move me at all. So what this skier is trying to do is make sure that they get a good start. So they're going to go 20% greater, which is 90.6 newtons. And that's going to be in the forward direction. Now, the problem is, as soon as they start moving, the friction is no longer going to be static. It's going to then be kinetic. So the kinetic friction has a different coefficient. And what I'll do is I'll calculate it here. Mu Fn. Same 539, but my mu happens to be 0 0.05. The coefficient of kinetic friction is much less than the static friction. So 0.05 times 539 gets me 26.95. 26.95 newtons. So now the friction is... 26.95 newtons. Well, in this case, we know all the forces in the x direction. Some of the force in the x is going to be 90.6 to the right because it's positive, minus 26.95 newtons to the left because it's friction, equals 55 kilograms times A. So if I take 90.6 subtract 26.95, I get 63.65, divide it by the mass, 55, and I get an acceleration of 1 point, oh, I'm sorry, 1.157, which should probably be 1.16 meters per second squared. And from there we can find whatever else we need to find. But for this problem we want to know their acceleration, and we had to use the static first to figure out what the value of the applied force was. A little tricky, but in this case we had to use both types of friction to calculate the final answer.